So I think that in order for there to be productive talk in a classroom, in order for there to be uh, a shared responsibility and ownership of what we're trying to figure out, uh, there's a lot of legwork that's done in the beginning of the year um, and establishing lots of things, like what it means to actually turn and talk to somebody, um, from down to our body language, to making eye contact, uh, to the kind of respect and rapport we need to have with somebody when their eyes, or when their suggestions uh, make absolutely no sense to us. Uh, we talk about what it means to actually argue with someone respectfully um, when we disagree with someone, and at the same time, we also need to understand that in a community, in a classroom community, or a scientific community, I should say, that there's not just as much talking, but listening is also a valuable part, that uh, when we restate an idea that somebody else says, it's because it's not showing that you understand, but you're also helping somebody else in the group who may not understand what somebody else just said, but maybe at a different level. I think that as the school year continues, um, it is absolutely okay to go back and revisit those norms um, as a refresher for someone who maybe is, has gone really comfortable in our classroom, or maybe somebody else has not. Um, to say, hey, you do have a voice that matters. You, you haven't really talked. We need to hear your ideas because everyone's ideas matter. Um, and we reference that a lot, that everyone's you know, an important part of the classroom. We all bring a unique skill set. We need to hear your voice or um, you know that we shouldn't single anything out because as we're trying to make sense of the phenomenon, um, one idea may actually be an important part in figuring something out.